Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to another walk around book discussion. Today we are exploring Hood River, Oregon, going to a little lavender farm and a winery while discussing A Girl is a Body of Water by Jennifer McCombie. The novel is set in Uganda, predominantly in the 1970s and 80s, following a girl named Karabo and her journey into womanhood, essentially, um, focusing a lot on education and the importance and privilege of access to education. In my August TBR video, I briefly touched on this book, um, but it is about Kirabo, who lives with her grandparents and uh, her many cousins, aunts and uncles. Her father comes in and out of the picture, but her mother is not discussed. Um, whenever she brings up her mother and asks questions, everybody goes silent. It's kind of a taboo, touchy subject. So she turns to the village witch, who is the nemesis of her own grandmother, um, to look for answers. Kirabo struggles with what she calls two sides of herself, kind of a bad spirit who in situations of discomfort or situations that she disagrees with flies off um, as a sort of spirit to distance herself from her body and the situation she is in. Um, and she also goes to this village witch for help with that. The village witch is called Nisuta, I believe. Um, and she explains that uh, Kirabo is actually one of, has the original form of womanhood before uh, women were kind of confined and told how to be um, and it follows a story where Karabo is trying to embrace her true self and understand what it is to be a woman in Ugandan culture in the 70s and 80s. The novel also has flashbacks to Karabo's grandmother and uh, Misuta's childhood where they were best friends and follows their own falling out um, and you see the changes in Ugandan culture and in how family hierarchies are organized and structured between uh, her grandmother's generation and her own generation. There's lots of discussion about polygamy and marriage and family structures and the hierarchy of uh, the first child of male children that is often discussed and referenced. A lot of the discussion is about uh, Karabo discovering that her grandparents, whom she loves so dearly, have their own flaws and their own struggles. Um, and realizing that the people that you love as a child, who you look up to and respect, are not flawless human beings. Uh, so there's a lot of discussion of where she is coming to age and understanding that her, her family members are human beings who struggle just as she does. Karabo does join a boarding school where she meets many other girls and is introduced to education that challenges her to question the, the norm um, where she really begins to thrive. However, she has a falling out with her best friend. Karabo is from a well-to-do family um, and her best friend is from a laboring family who works for her grandfather in a neighboring village. And there's already a lot of discussions between the two of them. Uh, when they as children get into arguments, she will point out her friend's family's uh, social economic status 
and her friend in turn will point out the fact that she would be beautiful if she didn't have such a dark complexion, things like this uh, that really kind of boil over as the girls start growing up. The two girls mimic in many ways uh, Karabo's grandmother and the village witch's relationship and their falling out. Um, and you can kind of see history repeating itself, but in new circumstances, which is very interesting. While Kirabo is at boarding school, the Ugandan-Tasmanian War breaks out, uh, known as, in Tasmania as the Karago War, or in Uganda as the Liberation War in the late 70s. When the war breaks out, you see the anxiety it brings to the girls at the boarding school as they don't know what is happening to their families at home. Um, and it becomes closer and closer to Karabo's own family and her connections. There are also many discussions about a woman's body and what is beautiful or dangerous, um, what is dirty or clean, um, especially during childbirth. I think this book beautifully combines Ugandan folklore with um, the modern woman, if you will, and how women in Uganda, specifically Karabo and her peers, are struggling to connect how they feel as women and their education with uh, traditional Ugandan culture. Karabo is really supported by both Nasuta and her professors at the boarding school to embrace her femininity and her womanhood and to stand up for herself. Um, they have. The title comes from the presumption that women are creatures of water. So if men are creatures of land, then women are creatures of water. There's a really beautiful interweaving of Ugandan folklore as well as other cultures' folklore regarding women and water. For example, sirens, who are beautiful women, who of course lure men to their doom, or carvings of women on the front of the boat to calm a female sea, um, whereas a woman on the boat was seen as bad luck. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed another walk around book discussion with me. I hope you're doing well and see you soon. What's her name? No, I don't like that one. Okay, never mind.